Thank you so much. Thank you. It's a great honor to be here with all of you. So let me start by wishing you all good evening. I understand it's the last session of the day. And you notice our topic is the age of exploration in testing has arrived. Okay, so it seems like <clears throat> uh, age of discovery, age of exploration, okay, so age, that is what we are striving for. And of course, my name is Nitin Bowser. I'm from ProcessWorks, you know, which is based in Singapore. And we will be talking about some of the newer approaches to testing that we have in our field of software development. So we will be taking you through just the three topics. There'll be the introduction part, there'll be the tourist metaphor, which I would say is the heart of our presentation. And then I'm gonna take five minutes of your time just to talk a little bit about the ISTQB certification portfolio because ISTQB is the world's leading organization for software testers. Just want to give you a brief you know, overview of their work. But the introduction part where we start is this. Okay, why do we even need to explore? You know, we've been doing testing for a long time, you know, as long as we've had software development. So why do we need a different way of doing it? You know, and this first slide, tries to give us a brief background why the need for exploration came about. And the anecdote, you know, I have linked to this is, this is something that happened to me. You know, in the very first few months, very young tester joining this large company, and I had my test manager bring me this big specification document and ask me, you know, to rewrite the specs as tests. And of course, now I know this is called the analytical model of you know, uh, test uh, creation. So we analyze the specifications given to us or the risk register. From that, we come up with the test conditions. From those test conditions, we come up with test cases. And then we run through those test cases. And we would have a large number of these test cases. And when we did run these test cases, you know, we felt good. You know, we had done a good job. We had covered all the important things that needed to be covered. And you know, there's nothing wrong with this approach. It's a very systematic approach. And we would say it's a very structured approach. And those are the two terms we use for it today also. And they do have their spent areas. But you know, we are saying overall, what we do with this kind of testing is checking. It has value that it confirms something works as it's supposed to, but we do not cover the whole area surrounding it which is much, much bigger. Because as we know, you know, they will be unexpected things, undefined things, uncertainties, the unexpected results or risk. And here's the key thing. It does not account for the fact that the software is used by real people who have free will. Okay, so we say, you know, our users interact with our software dynamically, which is really a nice way of saying they are unpredictable. They will do all kinds of things with our software, which the people who developed it and tested it never even thought about. I know those of you, you know, who are in this area will definitely agree with me because we do know, you know, when we talk to the users, they're making use of certain features the way uh, the people who designed it and developed it never intended. So all kinds of things that you cannot account for in a specification. Because specification is, you know, it's a defined way something should work. And for a very long time, I feel this was enough. Nowadays, when we have really the whole world who's going to be using our software, I think we need to take that into account. And for that, for checking unexpected things, results, risks, unknowable things, we will need to do exploratory. Okay, so what we are proposing here is not that we need to do away with all the testing we have been doing in the past, not at all. That is not our goal here. We're saying it does have a place in testing. We just want you to think about this newer exploratory approach, which you know, in a lot of situations will give quite a lot of benefit in terms of the amount of effort we put into it. So what is it, okay? Exploratory, the name has been around for a while. 
okay i would date it back to even early you know 2002 2003 uh, mr james bach gave the name exploratory which is a perfect name for it because that's exactly what the tester is supposed to be they're supposed to be an explorer so we can imagine with exploring comes an element of freedom an element to explore you know look out for certain things react in the moment you know where not everything is planned right down to this you know every step so without predefined scripts or test cases so we are saying exploratory we would like the tester to explore any interesting paths that they see we would like them to explore you know whatever they observe you know which might give them a clue about some of the things that might be happening in the software so it's an act of carefully deliberately navigating through functionality user experience techniques and tools to identify where the software could be broken could be improved or simply where questions could be raised okay so all of this sounds good you know i mean freedom uh, to explore use your creative you know juices all that sounds good especially when it comes to work which is seen as very systematic which is the tester's work now here's the thing folks i have this slide especially prepared because there's quite a lot of you know misconceptions misunderstandings about exploratory and i will take you directly to the bottom line you know big red letters what we have is this is what it is not exploratory testing is not ad hoc testing it's not random testing it's not monkey testing okay because all these terms are used and not even dismissing these particular terms because i know in specific situations these particular kind of testing can help out what happens is when we mix these terms and think of them as exploratory and this actually is a quote you know i had people tell me this expert testing may often be misunderstood as just clicking around a bit and making sure things to okay okay just look around wander around okay now here's the thing folks exploring and wandering around are two very different things so we would like to highlight that at the beginning when we say exploring you know we are talking about experienced explorers you know they start with a particular goal in mind and they will follow specific things so let's think of it that way you know rather than okay we have limited time just do something you know try to find bugs no we saying you know we do have a systematic way of doing exploratory testing also so people think that a tester you know is a very straight laced very systematic person creating test cases writing automation and therefore they dismiss expert testing as something anyone can do so it's not even worth talking about so i feel this is a big myth about exploratory in fact we believe that expert testing is best done by an experienced tester so somebody who has been very good at systematic testing somebody who's used the analytical approach can really benefit from all of that because what we're saying is all those skills are not useless we're saying make use of all those skills and apply them to this particular approach and apply them to the exploration so i hope you know we get this feel that it's not ad hoc it's not random there is a system to it and that is what we'll cover so when we follow a script or just a defined set of test cases there is a danger that we fall into tunnel vision you know we focus only on what is before us we have this single minded focus which in lot of situations is good but we may miss things around us while we are looking at something we might miss you know maybe there are problems around it so when we explore it you know we go with the view that everything is new you know and we are just you know in this wonderland and we are checking things out and everything is new so could be everything is you know worth a look so we are not look out for inconsistencies with the rest of software and testing values and inputs that people may not have considered so i feel this is the big deal about exploratory it allows us to go out of our tunnel vision it allows us to look at things from very different perspectives and i feel the benefit is that 
these perspectives allow us to use the software in ways in which maybe it was not intended. However, you know, those are the ways in which maybe some of our users will be using our software. So that is why, you know, we say exploratory can add, you know, exploratory is not instead of regular testing. You know, we're saying expert testing can be a complement in addition to, and therefore we know it can benefit from people who already worked in, you know, testing before. Now, I just have a quick table for you where we compare, you know, when we say scripted testing here on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, you notice exploratory testing. Okay, so we're trying to give you a, you know, factor by factor comparison, you know, where we need a great level of documentation uh, before commencing scripted. Uh, documentation exploratory can be minimal. So you notice the highlight there. Um, scripted requires significant investment in time, cost, and effort preparing scripts, documentation that goes with it. In exploratory, you know, the big benefit people see is the minimal investment. There's no overhead related to reading the documentation. So our traditional approach emphasize prediction and decision making, exploratory approach, adaptability in learning. So as we are going on doing the testing, we are finding out more and more about the software. And, you know, we will modify our testing. So we don't create the entire root map right at the beginning. Okay, we say, let us start by checking certain things and move from there on. Okay, now this approach focuses more on controlling tests. Our exploratory testing approach focuses more on improvement of the test design. And this is real time test design we're talking about. We will do this as we go along. Okay, so this is not where we design all the exploratory tests at the beginning and then run all of them and then take a look at the results. What we do is we design a few tests, we run them, we look at the results. Based on the results, we will design a few more tests you know, look at them and, and run them, look at the results and so on. Okay, I, I have a couple of slides for you, which is from a project by, done by an organization. And what they wanted to do was, you know, they wanted to check effectiveness of uh, scripted versus exploratory. So they had two teams, five people each, and both those teams tested the same software, uh, same duration of time. And you notice on this side, you know, we have the scripted team, you know, the number of defect count and the exploratory team. Okay, major defects, minor defects. Okay, so all the defects that were found by the scripted team were found by the exploratory team. In addition, they found many more. Now, in phase two of the same project, you notice the overall defect count, you know, by the scripted team. Yeah, the team which followed traditional methods and the team that followed, you know, exploratory method. And if you look at the, you know, total defect count, you know, about, I guess, 19 over here. Yeah, and major defects and uh, minor defects. And here, you know, we didn't notice that the scripted team did find some defects which were not found by the exploratory team. So here's the thing, okay. Uh, very clearly, we know we should be using both these approaches in a good balance, okay? So folks, I'm not at all saying today that do away with scripted testing, focus only on exploratory. I feel, you know, it's a new approach. Let us give it a try. Let us give it a try in some of the projects we're working on. And, you know, if it gives, you know, us benefits, then we can include it in our regular cycles. Okay, let us use it only, you know, if you believe, you know, it's gonna give us benefits. Okay, so now we come to the heart of our presentation, the tourist metaphor. Okay, now this thing, you know, when we say tourist, basically what we're saying is, think of ourselves as a tourist who's visiting absolutely new city for the very first time. Okay, now two approaches before us, and I have done both, okay? You know, just wandering around, you have limited time, so, you know, and you have, uh, you know, uh, limited effort that you can expend. So you walk around, you know, in the neighborhood and you try to see as much as you can. However, without a context to it, it's quite possible, you know, that we might not even know 
what we are looking at. So you know, we I, this has happened to me uh, when I visited in New York. I I you know uh, in the morning I went out from my hotel. I was walking around, and when I came back to my hotel, you know the doorman asked me, "So you know how do you like the Empire State Building?" I said, "What is it close by?" He said, "You know you just walk past it." Now, when you're walking in the the streets, you know uh, you don't constantly look up, you know all the way, and and you really cannot see the you know skyline anyway. But I just walked by that building. I didn't even know it was right next door. So we're not saying wandering around. What we're saying is, as a tourist, let us be an informed tourist. And you know this is where the metaphor gets even more interesting. So what we're saying is, just like big cities might be divided up. into districts you know specific districts uh, which might even have specific boundaries and you know i'm sure you know certain cities do have that certain districts are absolutely separated so we carry forward that same distinction into our software now of course software we don't have physical boundaries but logical boundaries based on the features that the software carries okay so please you know play along with me here we are trying to look at a new software that we are supposed to test as if it's a new city that we are visiting so the software testers will explore paths or tours of the application that run through many features in various orders okay so this is where we are saying we have a informed way of doing things we have a systematic way of doing things with a little bit of pre planning so we are not saying you know let us go through a guided tour conducted by a company that is not what we are saying we are saying we are individual explorers but we do have a system by which we will explore which we believe is going to be even much better and is going to allow us to check the application faster and more thoroughly than freestyle freestyle means you know anything goes freestyle means ad hoc freestyle is a name of random okay just try something no we saying let's do better than that so with that in mind let me take you to the districts okay now folks everything that you see in this tourist metaphor you know has been derived from this wonderful book exploratory software testing by james whitaker is like the bible of exploratory testing and i absolutely love this book i've used it a lot and you know uh, the book gives us these six districts so you notice we have business district historical district entertainment district we have the tourist district hotel district and the cd district okay so we will go through each one of them i will show you the kind of tools that are possible in each of these districts and naturally because of time limitations i cannot take you through each and every tour but at least i can give you a sample so we will take up one tour in each of the districts and talk about it a little bit you know just to get an idea what these tours are so we will start first with the business district which we believe you know correctly is the main district you know maybe not from a tester's point of view maybe not from a tourist point of view but of course from the organization's point of view the business district is the most important because like a city business district contains the offices the banks you know the insurance companies firms organizations cafe shops so this is where business gets done okay it's it contains features and functions that customers will use okay so this is why customers are using our software for these features and functions to get something done now folks please understand business district does not always have to be only for business software whatever is the main purpose of the software is the business of that software so this district is where the collection of the most important features from you know the organization point of view are put together naturally you know for the tester it will be essential to make sure we check them so as a part of the business district tours you notice seven tours are given now we will not have time to cover all seven we are covering the first two guidebook tour and garbage collectors tour you know i always like this you know beautiful names they come up with 
I like the way they came up with the name, which are also so creative for a very creative approach. But the other tours, money tour, landmark tour, intellectual tour, FedEx, you know, Federal Express, so the courier tour, and after hours tour, also very interesting. But right now, let me take you first to guidebook tour. Okay, now a guidebook would be, you know, something that a city uh, tourism council has put out, okay, which identifies uh, best hotels, best bargains, top attractions, you know, uh, about the business district, how it's laid out, and so on. And cities must ensure these attraction areas for tourists are clean, safe, welcoming. And what we're saying is, similarly, if these are the main features of a software, they should be clear cut, you know, easy to find, well laid out, and people can visit and use them. So definitely the guidebook and what it contains would be the first thing we need to consider as tester. And for us in testing, a city guidebook, the similar thing would be a user manual. So some companies, you know, will call this guidebook tour as the F1 tour, F1. F1 is the F1 key, which is for us the help key, right? You hit F1, you know, you get the help and so on. And what we're saying is we will use the user manual and try to execute every scenario in the user manual as faithfully as possible. Okay, so we'll follow it to the dot and we'll run exactly through it. And what happens is, you know, it tells us, is the user manual a match for what the software does and vice versa? Because software might be doing things which might not be in the user manual. Okay, so either way, a guidebook tour would be like a prerequisite. You know, it's an essential thing. It's about the main things that the software is supposed to do. Now, one example they give us as an interesting twist on the guidebook tour is rather than using our own company's guidebook, what we can try out is we can use a competitor's user manual or a guidebook. Okay, so what it does is, you know, while we are going through the competitor's guidebook and we are trying to use our own software, naturally there's going to be a lot of mismatch. But maybe we will also see features which are given in the competitor's book, which are not existing in our software. Okay, so that can bring it to mind that, hey, we are missing certain features, or maybe the competitor is doing it in less steps. You know, the features are easily available. Okay, so it's a good thing for us to find out before our users find out, because you know that the users will be using the competitor's product, they'll be using our product, and they'll easily find out the difference between the two. Now, something totally different, even in the name, is garbage collectors tour. Garbage collectors, okay? Now, these are people, you know, who have a great understanding of that city because they'll be going through it every day, up and down the street, in a very methodical manner. And they'll be visiting every residence, every office building. And the other key thing about the garbage collectors is they're very efficient at their jobs. They'll spend very little time on each building, but they will get the job done. So when we say we will perform a garbage collector's tour on a software, you know, it's a methodical spot check. So what we'll do is we'll visit everything, but very briefly. We'll touch upon it, move on, touch upon it, move on, like a garbage collector. We will go to every screen, but we won't spend too much time there. We'll go to every dialogue, okay? We will you know, check everything, but we do not go into detail. So we choose a goal. You know, we can check all the menu items. We can check all error messages, all dialogue boxes. Okay, very briefly, just to see if it works. And visiting each one in the list by the shortest path possible. Okay, so that's the key thing. You know, like a garbage collector, we will be moving on, always conscious of the time. Okay, going from error message to error message. Now, I had done this, you know, very briefly in a project uh, a couple of months ago, you know, tried the garbage man, uh, garbage collector store. And what I noticed was as I was going through the error messages, because my focus was looking at all the error messages, I noticed that for a lot of the input screens, there was one common error message. That's it. 
all it said was the data you enter is not correct please try again that's it no matter what mistake the person had made in the data entry the same message came up now of course you can make a this is not very helpful because it's not really guiding the user about the mistake they made and you know what are they supposed to do then if they can't identify where they made a mistake okay folks the next one we have is historical district okay now historical district i mean we can easily make out in terms of a city you know it's a place which has been around a long time has heritage value heritage buildings things of historical importance absolutely for us in software historical would be about legacy meaning in our company software they will be legacy code which has been around for a while so that we call as historical okay if you don't have this then of course we don't have to worry about the historical district however a lot of us work in companies where historical code or legacy code makes up a big part you know of the software or maybe you know the legacy code is so stable and has been working for so long so what we have done is you know we created a newer system which interact with that in the back we still have the legacy code okay so when we say historical district tour okay we have something called the museum tour and the bad neighborhood tour okay so i'm going to talk about museum tour museum basically displays antiquities okay from the past okay for us to examine okay now in our software code base the antiquities will be the legacy code now certainly to understand this we will need to ask the developers okay to identify which areas are being serviced by legacy code and which areas are being serviced by the newer code and what we want to do is when we do historical tour we will be purposely visiting areas you know under which there is legacy code okay so the main reason is you know like a historical heritage site uh the people you know who inhabited that area are long gone the documentation might be there might not be there and you know because it's been around a while it always important to check identify older code and executable artifacts and ensure that they receive a fair share of testing attention okay so we purposely identify areas you know which have been in place for a long time and we ensure in our testing we visit those areas so like i said supposing our software is brand new everything is brand new you know none of it has been around for more than 2 years okay so we don't have a historical district so maybe we won't conduct the museum tour but i have personally seen this in my projects you know where we had this core of historical legacy code and you know there was just one person in the organization who understood it really and in a lot of areas you know what we saw was hey you know don't know what this does don't touch it okay so we were very careful about that historical artifact that we had because it worked and nobody wanted to mess with it okay so when we do testing to check historical data historical artifacts we are doing a museum tour now the fun part entertainment district okay where you know you would have the bells and the whistles and the fun time okay all the things that add to the pleasure of a tourist you know the entertainment district part okay so these are not the main features but supporting features which you know the users might be really happy about bells and whistles so within this you know we have all nighter tour supporting actor tour back alley tour now all nighter is exactly what it sounds like okay being out all night we love this entertainment area so much and it's open 24 hours okay we are going to be all night we are going to be out okay now what does that mean for us in testing it means leaving everything on how long can the app last how long can it run and process data before it just collapses so we don't let it take a break okay just like a tourist you know who's going on for 24 hours we make sure our application or app continues running without a break without shutting it down okay so here's the thing folks why does this work because of build up of data memory constant reading writing of variable values okay 
bad things can happen because going on for a long time. Memory leaks, data corruption, race conditions. Yeah. So when we do testing using the all nighter tour, we will not take a pause. We will not allow the software to take a pause. We'll keep it on. We'll open multiple tabs, keep them all on. Keep the application running without closing it. We will open files and not close them. Leave them open. And just you know, keep it on and see how long it lasts. We connect to remote resources, don't disconnect. Okay, remain connected to them. And so while these resources are used, we might be running other tests. Okay, to keep the software running and moving data around. This can uncover problems, you know, which may not come to light, you know, if you periodically shut the software down and restart it. No? Because some of these problems get solved in that process. What we're saying is, supposing it happens that the software has been kept running for a longer period of time, then what happens? That is what we need to find out in an all-nighter tour. Okay, folks, the next one you notice, the tourist district itself. Okay, so all the things which are of importance to a tourist, very specifically, right? Now, here's the thing, folks. I understand in a lot of cities, these districts may be mixed up. Sure thing, historical district, tourist district, you know, they might be overlap or might be the same, which is fine. We are purposely looking at them differently because it allows us to explain, you know, how these tourists will work. So tourist district will have a whole lot of things which are of importance to the tourists, souvenir shops, okay, specific food joints, which only the tourists will try, where the locals will not go. <laughs> so similarly, experienced users may not use certain features, but novice, first time, inexperienced users will try out certain features, okay. Experienced users will try shortcuts. Novice users, We'll take the long cut because they don't know better. Okay, so we, sorry, we will do uh, the tourist district, you know, is from perspective of the tourist. Okay, and within this, the first one, look at this name, okay, supermodel tour. <laughs> I always like that name, okay, souvenir collectors tour. Somebody who just there to collect souvenirs. And we all know people like that. Lonely businessman's tour and Scottish pub. Okay. All very interesting, I know. But we will look at the supermodel tour. Okay. Mainly because the name is so nice. Supermodel is exactly that. Okay. What we are saying is hey, like a supermodel visiting a new city. Okay. Beautiful people. But that's it. Okay. Think superficially. Whatever you do, don't go beyond skin deep. So we only cover the what is seen, okay? Always about looks and first impression, okay? So we don't dig deep. We don't need to find out the history of a place. We don't need to know what that building is. If it looks good, we are happy with it, okay? So what we do is, in when as a tester, we conduct a supermodel tour, we will only look at the superficial things. The interface, does it look good? How are the colors? Is the performance good? Okay. Uh, the GUI refreshed properly. Unsightly artifacts left on the screen. Okay. So unsightly is a very bad word for supermodels. You know, they don't like it. And naturally so. Using color. Is it being used consistently? Are the GUI panels internally consistent? Are, is our UI, you know, in line with a, a convention? You know, look and feel convention. So surface things will be covered in a supermodel tour. Okay, so you can imagine this will be greatly useful in terms of usability. Yeah, usability, attractiveness, you know, all those product quality characteristics can be very nicely covered by the supermodel tour. Now, sure, quite a lot of the problems we find with this, you know, uh, spelling mistakes, you know, uh, error messages, we don't make sense in terms of how they're written. Okay, color problems. You know, because something I've seen, you know, young, young developers would like to use all possible colors and nothing wrong with it. But, you know, color consistency is, is a good cognitive thing for the end users. Okay. So supermodel tour, as we are saying, surface only. And, you know, testers have a lot of fun when they do this. 
you know, because they, they don't have to worry about going deeper inside. Okay, folks, hotel district is, think about it, area where the hotels are, you know, maybe a secluded area, little bit quieter than the lesser city, you know, people can spend time there, relax away, you know, from all the main, you know, business or the entertainment district where they want to, you know, uh, lie back, relax, enjoy. So supporting features, secondary features in our software. And one big part of this is the rained out tour. Rained out, okay? So this is something I'm sure all of us have experienced. We plan our trip in advance. We go to the city and it rains, okay? And I'm sure I'll have to tell you that in Singapore. And if it does rain, quite a big chunk of what we are doing or had planned to do will get washed out. So we're using that metaphor here. When we check software, start, stop, start, stop. Things get canceled all the time in the middle of. And this is a very powerful tour. Okay. You notice experience test, we always talk about this. So start operations and stop them. Okay. We cancel them in the middle. Okay. We try to print the document. We Cut it short in the middle of printing. Okay. So any feature that has a cancel option, we will start it and hit cancel and we'll see what happens. Okay. So, you know, basically we're interrupting things by cancellation. So rained out means, you know, cancellation of plans. So typically wherever you have time consuming operations, you know, searching, printing, refreshing, all those in the middle of that, if you cancel, we want to know what happens. And very often, we can really come up with, you know, very critical defects this way. So every time a cancel button appears, we click it. That's the tour. Okay. So no cancel button, escape key, back button key. And I'm sure you must have noticed as a user that if you do this, okay, a lot of times, uh, the web system or the web service will malfunction. Okay. And I have noticed in some, you know, website they mentioned, do not click the back button. Do not click the back button because it's possible to click it, but it will severely interrupt the work that is going on. Okay. So rained out means we rain on our parade. We rain in the, uh, while the operations are going on. Okay, folks, last part, you know, Purposely kept last is CD, CD, you know, things that have to be kept away from the view of people. Unsavory places that few guidebooks or visitor bureaus will document. They are full of people doing bad and illegal things, better off left alone. Okay, so I don't think as a tourist you will purposely want to visit them, but we should know that such things exist. You know, in large cities, of course they do. So for us as testers, you know, these are areas we must visit because places of vulnerability that may be very unacceptable to the user should they remain in the product. And under this, you know, we have these three wonderful tools. And I love all three of them. Saboteur, then we have anti-social tour and obsessive compulsive OCD tour. Okay. But let me talk about the saboteur. Basically. This is with the view of sabotaging. We undermine the application at every possible opportunity. Now, certainly you can imagine quite a lot of security checking can be done this way. Okay. So we understand the working of the software or the application and we are purposely putting hindrances. We are purposely sabotaging it. Not, you know, like we did in rain down. Rain down, there was a cancel button specifically put there. But here, we are going to find all ways of sabotaging the application. We say, okay, I'm trying to upload this file. And while it is uploading, you know, we go and, you know, we delete that file. And we see, we want to see what happens. And I have done this, okay, you know, and I have uncovered a critical defect in one of the software we were testing. It asked us to, you know, upload our photograph. And, you know, it was a bigger size, high resolution photograph. While it was uploading, you know, by mistake, I went and deleted it when I wanted to delete something else. And I noticed, I come back to the application, it kept trying. It kept trying, even though 
you know, the photograph it was trying to upload, actually the system no longer had it. And it did not have a way to recover from that. Okay. So rigging the file operations to fail, uh, corrupting the file, giving a wrong file, changing the header of the file. Okay. So we could ask it to do memory intensive operation. Okay on a machine with very little memory and see what happens. Or we would purposely start other, you know, applications in the background. So our application is starved for memory or CPU cycles. Okay, so basically like a saboteur, you know, somebody who sabotages, does things, you know, in a very different way, in a, like an enemy word, you know, not the way our software is supposed to be checked. But you can imagine, you know, this can, I'll give you one quick example. You know, in security testing, we have something called attack of a thousand slashes. You know what that is? Simply HTTP colon, and you have two forward slashes. Somebody decided to put, you know, a thousand slashes after that. And what they realized was, you know, it really causes problems uh, to the hosting computer. Thousand slashes, it allowed system administrator access. Now, you know, you can imagine the first creative person who came up with it, you know, was just trying to sabotage it by giving it way too much than it could handle. So in this tour, the tester is going to be very creative in finding many ways to rig the environment by adding in deleting file, sorry, changing file permissions, unplugging networking cables, running other applications in the background and deploying the application under test on a machine that is known, has known problems and so forth. Okay, so I think you can imagine that security testing, you know, will make great use of a saboteur. Basically, a hacker would be a saboteur. So any place they find an entry, a vulnerability, a loophole, they're gonna try to see how they can take advantage of it. And so we are looking at it from that perspective. We are trying to see where are the loopholes, which a saboteur would focus on. Okay, folks, the last part, you know, is about the, you know, the tours themselves. Okay, the tours give us a structure. You know, we are an informed visitor. We are an informed tourist. And interesting and relevant scenarios rather than ad hoc, you know, wandering around. So the tools will help us to interesting usage path that tend to be more sophisticated than traditional testing where individual testers will try to test only a single feature in isolation. So we're trying to look at combinations of features in such a way, you know, which might not get done in our scripted testing. So that would be the key goal of these tours and how we do this. The other thing I would like to mention is, you know, once we start using this metaphor of tours in the company, it becomes very quickly popular. And our testers, our team members will get very familiar with very quickly. You know, he's not going to landmark tour or the money tour, you know. Yeah, I'm doing garbage match duty today. So they do the garbage garbage collectors tour or somebody saying, hey, you know, fun time for me. I'm doing the supermodel tour. You know, the reason is this, that we are giving them a theme. You know, the tour gives them a theme for doing things in a particular way. So if you tell two testers to go run the particular tour, a supermodel tour, you're quite confident, you know, that they will look at superficial things. They are not going to waste time in going to the details of things. If you ask them to do, you know, the guidebook tour, then you know they're going to make good use of the, you know, the help facilities or the user manual. So we have good repeatability happening because of, you know, continuing with this metaphor of tours. So the built-in strategy and goal, see, this is the thing of the tool makes them more repeatable and transferable among the testers. Okay, so rather than having two testers told, just check this, okay, do something. What we have is, you know, we can split the work up and we can say, you know, one tester does the guidebook tour, one does the, you know, the garbage collectors tour, somebody else does the historical tour. And I have actually used this in uh, certain projects. And even with voluntary testers, okay? So this was not a, a commercial project I worked on. This was for a charitable organization I belong to. And, you know, we volunteers were checking their work to see, you know, how this software had been created. 
and the volunteers had a great time you know even though I, constantly they were telling me nothing we don't have background in testing but you know after you know just a few illustrations about the techniques to try out you know they could check the system from a user's perspective so we have tools as a mechanism to both organize the testers thinking about how to approach exploring an application and in organizing the actual testing okay so it's a strategy about what we are going to do and it also going to be helpful in how we are going to do it because we can divide the work based on the tools okay we can have a list of tools and please understand we are not saying we need to do all the things we are given here okay the other thing is can we come up with our own tools yes absolutely these are tools which james whitaker came up with and tried and tested in microsoft you know he was an employee there and then he joined google and he continued using them and came up with more now we can come up with our own tools we can you know decide that there are certain districts that are not mentioned here sure thing and those districts might you know we might have a different tool for checking those districts so there is a flexibility here there is a adaptability here and what can happen is we already have a list of tools which have been created by people more than 10 years ago they have been using them so we can use it as a starting point and we can keep adding to it so we can use a list of tools as a checklist did you think about this checklist and also help a tester match application features to the test techniques that will properly exercise them so these tools help make testers make myriad decisions about which paths to choose in push to apply or parameters to select okay so it's a guidance so we are saying let us make our testers informed tourist you know and let us make sure you know they're not wandering around they have a strategy how they're going to you know cover this entirely new city okay folks this is about the heart of my presentation about exploratory where we focus you know on giving some structure to exploratory with the use of the tourist or the tours metaphor one last thing like i said you know is i just wanted to cover about the istqv international software testing qualification board so this is an organization founded almost 20 years ago uh, headquartered in belgium okay so it spread in europe first now of course all over the world but it's a premier organization international software testing qualification board so process works you know is the registered education provider for the southeast asia region okay for the certification courses uh, which are you know uh, conducted through the istqb so first of all a truly international organization i just want a couple of minutes of your time just to take you through this and uh, i'm sure you you might already be aware of this okay so istqb is at the heart of things over here creation of new syllabi definition of worldwide rules working group activities okay they also have member boards in different countries okay so india singapore malaysia the us uh, germany okay in different countries they have a member board which is in charge of the you know activities for us to be in that country okay they also have exam providers you know the companies which are specializing in conducting the ias degree exams so there are 23 exam providers all over the world okay and then accredited training providers who are accredited by the member boards so of course like i said process works is an atp accredited training provider and you know through the member board it is you know associated with ias degree so 230 training providers all around the world are helping ias to be with their work and the big figure i wanted to show you here was this okay more than 750000 certifications have been done in the 20 years okay so this is a very very large number as you can imagine so you know this entire structure has been put in place 20 years ago and you know what they do is a great job of supporting the testing community yeah in all its endeavors so not only just individual testers 
but testing organizations also within companies. One last thing I have for you is this slide, which is about all the certifications which are, you know, uh, on the portfolio of ISTGB. You know, we have the CTFL, Certified Test of Foundation Level. Then we have the Advanced Level Certifications here, Core Certifications. Uh, recently in Agile, we have Foundation and Advanced Level. At the very top, we have Expert Level, you know, in uh, test management and improving the test process. And the really interesting thing is happening here. You know, where you know, we have the specializations in different areas in which testers get to work. Now, these syllabus have been created with the, the current practices which are being followed by companies. So therefore, when we say exploratory testing, it is definitely covered in ISTQV syllabus. We do cover it at the foundation level just a little bit. At the agile tester, we go into more detail. At the advanced level, you know, we go into the specifics of exploratory. Because ISTQB is seeing that more and more companies are adopting exploratory testing. In fact, you know, on their website, you will notice they're trying to come up with, you know, some uh, good syllabus, some good material resources for those who want to get into the area and want to implement exploratory testing in their companies. Okay, folks, thank you for your patience. I know at the end of the day, you know, last session of the day. So what we'll do now is, you know, this was my presentation. So let me take a moment here. Okay. So let, let me take you back, you know, to my main slide. I noticed, you know, in the chat box, we have questions. So Gretchen, I'll go, I'm sorry. I'll go through the questions one by one. Okay. The first question I see here is, when do we use expert testing and when do we use ad hoc testing? And do we need both? Okay, that's a great question because like I pointed out, you know, ad hoc is also a term which is quite commonly used by people and companies. So here's the thing. I would say that, you know, instead of this or this, you know, instead of making a choice, we could just say whatever ad hoc testing we're going to do, let us do it in an exploratory manner. That's it. Okay, so what we're doing is we're giving certain guidance we give a certain structure to ad hoc testing when we do exploratory testing. So they're not exclusive. They're not mutually exclusive. Okay. Ad hoc testing does have advantages. You know, if you talk to senior experienced testers, they will tell you ad hoc testing does uncover quite a lot of problems. But everybody will do it differently and they might miss certain things out. So what we're saying is let us implement ad hoc through the exploratory approach. How good is expert testing for agile projects? Actually, that's, you know, uh, that is what led to, you know, the age of exploration because agile makes great use of exploratory. Because here's the thing, limited lightweight documentation, limited timeline. In fact, if you think about agile software development, agile software development is exploratory software development. So even in Agile, you know, the focus is that we will develop some things, we'll get the feedback, we'll do it better. And that's how we develop our software in increments. So certainly they have a great affinity for exploratory. Like I said, you know, uh, the term exploratory was first coined in the 1990s by Ken Kainer, okay? And then we noticed that, you know, specific form for exploratory came about in about 2002. So if you look at Agile and Exploratory, both of them have grown hand in hand. So Exploratory is a great fit for Agile projects. Okay, then we have a third question. Does it make sense to ask the vendor who has developed the website to conduct Exploratory testing and how much does it cost to do so? Great, this is a great question. Okay, now here's the thing. Okay, I feel you know, it's, it's going to be a win-win. It's going to be beneficial to both our organization and the vendor. But, you know, maybe we might have a tough time convincing them because, you know, the vendor might say, you know what, we have our own way of doing testing. We are very proud of it. And, you know, we have been doing this for a while. Okay. So we don't need to do exploratory. It could happen, right? I mean, there could be a situation where the vendor refuses. Now, uh, it's, I don't think it's just a matter of the cost part. 
okay it could be that they don't uh, believe in it that they have not done it before because apart from that i cannot think of any other way why they would not want to do it because the benefits of them uh, exploratory are very very obvious okay i will give you an example where i worked on a project where the company had already done very systematic testing on the software and there was a challenge you know to my team that like, you guys you know you do your exploratory and let's see what you find and it was an eye opener you know i had three people with me and me four four of us one week basically five days only and we did it session based exploratory testing and we did uncover you know critical defects so yes there is a great advantage to exploratory even after a vendor has done systematic testing because it will uncover problems which are not covered by the testing they did and the cost of it you know to be honest is basically in terms of man hours okay it's not going to be a huge cost for the vendor but convincing them to try this something new might be you know a tricky thing okay so unless they see the benefit of that or they see the efficacy of exploratory okay so they might not so you know like like people say hey show me the money show me the proof exploratory works so maybe initially they might be resistant to this idea the cost part i don't believe is very high okay because we really do not require any major you know tooling automation for it okay we can get it done uh, typically manual testing wise what we do need is the time and the effort of good testers small team dedicated testers one week i'm sure they can find problems that the vendor has not found and there are companies which do this okay uh, dedicated companies so i know i cannot give you exact number but i can say that the cost is not much okay because of quite a lot of the infrastructure okay and the tooling cost is not required for uh, exploratory testing okay that is all the question from the audience okay so thank you very much okay honor and a privilege for me to be with you okay thank you for the invite and i hope you know i was able to give you some idea about the age of exploration thank you very much